These rocks show something unusual. They record a rainstorm that did not stop for almost 2 million years. Not a season, not a decade. Nearly 2 million years of continuous wet conditions. It happened in the late Triassic, beginning around 234 million years ago, and it changed life on Earth in ways that shaped everything that followed. It may even be one of the reasons dinosaurs became the dominant land mammals. Most of us hear the rise of dinosaurs as a story about strength, but the real question is different. What kind of climate shift could turn small, rare red tiles into the major vertebrates on land? This matters for us because the same climate controls that created that ancient wet period are the ones we are changing today. Understanding this event helps us understand what rapid change can do to our planet. In this video, I'll walk you through why that rain began, what it did to the planet, and how it opened the door for the dinosaur. We began in the late Triassic, just before the carnial pluvial episode. This wet interval began roughly 234 million years ago and lasted until about 232 million years ago. All the continents were connected as the supercontinent Pangaea, a single land mass that had formed during the late Paleozoic and continued into the Triassic. The interior of Pangaea was far from the oceans, so very little moisture reached it. Much of it was hot, dry, and dominated by deserts. Life was still recovering from the end Permian extinction, which took place 252 million years ago and remains the most severe extinction in Earth history. Even about 18 to 20 million years later, ecosystems were still reorganizing. Dinosaurs were already present. The earliest dinosaur fossils date to between 240 and 235 million years ago. But at this time, they were small and common and ecologically minor. They were one group among many reptile lineages that dominated the Triassic world. Something had to change for dinosaurs to rise beyond that limited role. Around the start of the Carnian, a major volcanic episode occurred in what is now Western North America. This region, known as the Rangualia Large Igneous Province, erupted in several large pulses around 234 million years ago. These were not typical volcanic eruptions. They produce enormous volumes of lava and release vast amounts of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide traps heat in the atmosphere. When it increases quickly, global temperatures rise. Warmer air can hold more moisture. Warmer oceans evaporate more water. More evaporation means more clouds, and more clouds mean more rain. Once this cycle begins, the climate system can shift into a different state. That shift set the stage for what happened next. The warming triggered by the Rambelia eruptions reorganized the global water cycle. Instead of periodic storms, Earth entered a prolonged interval of weather conditions. This event is called the Carnial Pluvial Episode. It lasted from roughly 234 to 132 million years ago, with the wettest phase spanning about 1 to 2 million years, depending on the region. Deserts began to contract. Forests moved into areas that previously received very little rainfall. Plants that depended on steady moisture expanded their ranges across parts of Pangaea's interior. As vegetation changed, ecosystems changed with it. Herbivores found new sources of food. Predators follow herbivores. Rivers carved new paths. Soil became richer. Once these processes began, they reinforced one another. A world that had once been dry and relatively stable became a landscape full of new ecological opportunities. Early dinosaurs were small, light, and adaptable. These traits were not especially important in the dry Triassic landscape that existed before the carnial pluvial episode. But in the wet, forested environments that emerged during the event, these traits became useful. Dinosaurs could move through forested terrain more easily than many of the heavier, more specialized reptiles that had dominated drier habitats. They could exploit the new vegetation and the expanding diversity of insects and small vertebrates. Other reptile groups struggled as the climate shifted. 
Many of them declined between roughly 234 and 230 million years ago. Dinosaurs expanded into the ecological space left behind. It was not a competition that dinosaurs won through superiority. It was a shift in opportunity. The climate created openings and dinosaurs were the ones able to use them. By the end of the Carnian pluvial episode, dinosaurs were no longer rare. They were diversifying and spreading across Pangaea. These events set the stage for their later dominance during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Changes on land were mirrored by changes in the oceans. When volcanic carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere, some of it dissolves into seawater. This increases ocean acidity and alters marine chemistry. During the Carnian pluvial episode, carbonate production decreased in many regions. Sea levels fell in several areas. Carbon isotope records show clear disruptions that match the timing of the wet interval on land. Marine ecosystems reorganized alongside terrestrial ones. The Carnial pluvial episode was not an isolated terrestrial event. It was a global Earth system shift. The Ronguelli eruptions introduced carbon dioxide into the atmosphere quickly enough to change Earth's climate. Today, we are adding carbon dioxide even faster. The outcomes are not identical because the world is different now, but the pattern is consistent. Rapid greenhouse gas increases lead to reorganized rainfall, more extreme draw and flooding, changes in ocean chemistry and stress ecosystems that struggle to keep pace with an environmental change. The Carnian pluvial episode shows that climate change does not need to happen overnight to be disruptive. It only needs to move faster than life can adapt. Two million years of altered rainfall patterns created winners and losers. Dinosaurs were among the winners. Others were not. It took millions of years for Earth systems to stabilize again. We do not need to imagine nonstop rain today. The lesson is simpler. When climate shifts rapidly, every species must adjust, move or decline. This is not about fear. It is about understanding how Earth has behaved in the past so we can make informed decisions in the present. The story of dinosaurs is often told through their size and strength, but they succeeded because the world changed first. Climate created the opening, dinosaurs stepped through it. Today, we're changing the climate at an even faster pace. We can choose whether we create conditions that support stability or conditions that force ecosystems to reorganize faster than they can handle. Earth has run this experiment before. The rocks record the results. Subscribe for more science that explains our past and shapes our future. Did you know that Climate Ages started as a science storytelling newsletter that now has over 12,000 subscribers? Visit climateages.com and join a community of optimistic changemakers. I can't wait to see you there.